My name is Steve James, and this is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 392. And welcome back to the Weekend in the Word with Barb Bennett, teaching on having favor. Well, uh, our first teacher this morning is Barb Bennett from Massachusetts, a wonderful woman of God that I'm so glad to introduce to you if you haven't met her yet, okay? Thank you, Stephen Rosen, for the blessing of being here and for the, all you guys who... <laughs> I, I'm not like this ever. <laughs> I'm not. I have to be sober for him. <laughs> um <laughs> okay no i'll i'll be good but anyway uh, it's a terrific blessing to be here um to be in the word <laughs> um <laughs> um so <laughs> no no i'm good um that might have been a good idea no <laughs> ken and i were at the dinner table or the table after afterwards looking at songs and he started saying how about unworthy and i i said why don't we call the song now worthy instead of unworthy now worthy now worthy because what a great work was done for us i mean he made us worthy um and i, I was very blessed with the theme of this weekend too about searching the scriptures therefore many believed and uh, i was tr tremendously blessed with the acts 2 42 and what I'd like to teach on is having favor. Okay. So if we go to Acts 2, verse uh, 42. Thanks, Larry, for the idea. <laughs> um, in Acts 2, verse 46. <clears throat> and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. <clears throat> and my focus again is on, well, praising God and having favor. Having favor is having grace. And I wanted to take a look at the verb tense here. Praising, I could say, I praise or we praise. And that would be present tense right now. If I said, we will praise, it's tomorrow. We praised was yesterday, but praising is right now and it's going with us. <laughs> it's going with us. And so having favor is going with us. It's the hand of God in our lives. It's divine favor. And it's having that divine favor all the time, wherever we are. But I wanted to show you the other INGs in the verses before that, because it says, continuing daily with one accord and breaking bread from house to house, then they did eat. Okay, it didn't say eating. Okay, we're not eating all the time. They did <laughs> eat, <laughs> but we are breaking bread. The fellowshipping is there, okay? Did eat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church, such as should be saved. Sorry, adding to the church daily, such as should be saved. Let's go to 2 Peter, uh, 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter one. As you know, the subject of grace is a gigantic subject. Bruce has done millions of teachings on it. Um, there are books that have been written about it. There will be another book that comes out about it. Um, and, and I did my research paper in the core on that those that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. And I don't remember anything about my last year in the core, what we did, because I was in the word <laughs> all the time. I was chewing be between classes, between whatever activities about receiving grace, lombardoing grace, and lombardoing righteousness. And it was a fabulous time in my life. I still is. But one of the things about having grace is it's God's hand on your life. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1. Peter 
an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied okay well all through the church was grace and truth grace and peace grace and peace grace and peace and now we have grace and peace multiplied and it talks about through sanctification of the spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of jesus christ the sprinkling of, of blood was something done in the old testament when they put the sprinkling of the blood on the altar and on the day of atonement in the holy of holies on that ark and they were at one with God. Well, we're at one with God because of the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. The work has been done. And, you know, one of the things I had also wanted to share with you today was about preparing your heart when you get into the word of God. Because I know sometimes people get into the word and they're like, okay, 15 minutes. I'm going to tell you, you know. Or, you know, and they've got the clock on, send it for 15 minutes. I got to do my 15 minutes every day. Or, And in the middle of the 15 minutes, they're going, wait a second, I forgot to put the laundry in. Oh, no, I got to remember, but they're interrupted. They're not having that quietness. And you want to put off, put off the world, elbow out the world when you get into God's word. This is God's living word. It's holy ground and when you get into this living word you think about how to receive the word wherefore put off all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness god i don't know this i maybe have read ephesians mm -hmm. a thousand times but you know it more than i do and let that be a holy ground place for you and god in his word and the other thing is that sometimes I listen to conversations around me. Sometimes there can be a sense of unworthiness that people still carry either in studying the word or delivering God's word. And that is a done deal. Just get that skin of sin consciousness and give the world. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there are accusing spirits around us. Okay, that are wanting to breathe hell down our back. And in the name of Jesus Christ, get out of my life. I had a conversation with my sister who can tend to be melodramatic and everything is horrible and she studies her navel all the time and everything. And, you know, I had a quick conversation with me, with her. And I'm sorry to speak evil of my sister, but she's a wonderful sister. Um, but I realized afterwards I had all, I was carrying all this feeling horrible to myself. And I went, wait a minute there is oppression hanging around here right now and in the name of jesus christ get out of here and you know you guys take your authority whenever you're getting in the word or you're around situations and stand like a son of god and let's live this life more than abundantly and having favor okay yeah. okay so we're having favor but anyway i wanted to show you that it says blessed be god the father so the grace and peace are multiplied Grace and peace are multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us. He's begotten us. We talk about Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. We've been begotten by him. We're his children. He loves us. We're his kids. And I, I think about this because of my own children, and I know that deliverance that when you delivered your child okay what a time of joy and rejoicing that is and and knowing the protection that you have over your children and how much god watches and protects us we're the only begotten of the i mean we're the begotten we're begotten of god we all are begotten of god it says here and that is great grace I was thinking about this because I was a, the past 10 years, I've been a first grade school teacher at a Christian school. And one of the things that we had to do was have this, um, a lockdown practice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you know, you got little first graders and, you know, I'm going to tell you that we got to be terrified 
that we're going to have some uh, some bozo the clown come in here and you know we're god's kids and so i'm going i just going to tell you in case something they want to need to do something quickly we got to close this window and we're going to go in this corner and i was like guarding them like this in this corner and i'm going how much bigger is god yeah okay how much we're begotten of his we're his child okay and that is grace <laughs> that's grace let's go to john chapter one and like i said we see grace and peace and grace and peace everywhere <clears throat> in john chapter one It says in verse 14, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. <clears throat> I'd like to read you something that uh, E.W. W. Bullinger wrote, and it's a grace, a great blessing. Full of grace and truth. In the days of Moses, there was grace, and the law was an exhibition of truth. But when Jesus himself came, he himself, his life and death were the, supr the supreme manifestation of grace and truth. It was supreme manifestation of grace. <clears throat> then it says, uh, verse 16. And of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. Grace for grace is grace piled upon grace. It keeps being renewed. It keeps being renewed. I've got grace today. And I'm walking around the, you know, last week and I'm saying, God, this subject is so big. How can I teach? How can I do this in a half an hour? Teach about grace. <laughs> the first that popped up, my grace is sufficient for that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, I got it. <laughs> and for, it's his divine favor in our lives. Let's look at what happened in the book of Acts with grace. In Acts chapter four, it says, and I'm not going to read all these records. We're just going to look at the specific words, verse where grace was used, but it says that great grace was upon them all. Okay, they had great power and great grace was upon them all. And I'm, I didn't say what verse because I'm just telling you where some of these things are going because we've got a lot of places to go, okay? Um, and then in Acts 11, it says that Barnabas saw the grace, okay? It was something that was visible. They could see the love. They could see the grace that was happening. They could see that there were power. There was miracles. There was wonders. Look at Romans chapter 3. In Romans 3, it says, oh, I'll start with verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory, glory of God, being justified freely by his, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth, and it says that he set Jesus Christ forth before himself. Okay, mankind could not figure it out, could not do it. So he figured it out. And he sent his son. And he put him before himself. This is the Passover. This is the high priest. This is the gig. We're doing it because they can't figure it out. <laughs> They're not going to figure it out. So he was set forth before himself. A propitiation also could be translated mercy seat. That word mercy seat. That's where God appeared to man was over the mercy seat. It's right there. And we have Jesus Christ and he is our mercy seat. He is our propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. 
let's look at some more places where this great section of, of grace is. We can see it that we are to be strong in the grace. We can see, let's take a look at Ephesians. There's a lot, 12 uses in Ephesians, okay? Grace is used as a means giving. It's translated thank. It's translated, it's a root word of forgiveness. All sorts of uses of this word grace, chorus. Let's look at, let me look at this one place that I was. Okay. In Ephesians chapter one. 12 times we'll see if we see this here. Uh, verse two, uh, Mo, can you read that please? Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, we got grace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse six, Larry. to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Okay, he's made us accepted in the beloved, and it's to be to the praise of the glory of his grace, the glory of it. I'm going to go back and read the whole first verses, okay? It says, blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. We didn't miss a one of them. We're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Sit right there. One of the greatest verses in the Bible is right there. And that's grace. And you could just chew on that one all day. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy. We get to be holy. I know what goes on in his mind sometimes. <laughs> okay. But he said, I'm going to put this holiness inside you. I've made you holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. He said, look how good I've been. Verse seven, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. We've got it. It is by grace. In Ephesians chapter two, it says in verse five, even when we were dead in sins, he hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace, are you saved? We have wholeness. So if you don't feel like you're whole, if you don't feel like something is right, he made that for me. He gave me that grace. It's mine. In Ephesians 2, 7, well, 6, and hath raised us up together and made us, you know, sorry, you can't, you can't just lose this context, okay? <laughs> okay, we're quickened together with Christ. By grace, you are saved and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of and in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus for grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. In the ages to come, he wants to show us, see how kind I've been to you. I have been kind to you. <clears throat> um, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. In all these uses of the word gift, this particular word gift, most of the time, 90, all the time, except for this one verse, it's used about man giving gifts um, or gifts to God. But this one use is God's gift to man right here. Okay. It's the gift of God. You're saved. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Okay. Let's not get lost here. Okay. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Colossians. Colossians chapter two. Uh, in verse five, it says, where am I? oh yeah, yeah, sorry, two, six. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving, abounding with thanksgiving. I think when people aren't thankful, they're not rooted. One of the things that roots a believer in right doctrine is thankfulness. And, you know, that word thankfulness is like such a little word and seems so insignificant, but it's so gigantic. And the root word of thanksgiving is charis. Okay. It's a grace word. We're living in the administration of grace. We're living in the administration of forgiveness. Kara word is there too. We're in the administration of thankful, thankfulness. It's all grace. It's thankfulness. You know, when I was on, and it stops fighting. It stops bickering amongst people. I remember in my wow family, the first time I went out, wow, there was a lot of little cat fights. Okay. We're going out witnessing guys. Mm -hmm. And you know, when everybody went out witnessing, they came back and they are so thankful oh. to have a believer who loves God, <laughs> who loves his word. And they're like-minded with them and all the fighting and the bickering stuff because they got so thankful. Okay. It's amazing if we just get thankful. <laughs> okay. We got to go back to Ephesians and get back into the other grace section in Ephesians. <laughs> Uh, let me see, Barbara, that I need to. Then in Ephesians, uh, we're just going to say Ephesians 3, 2 talks about the administration of grace. Admi uh, Ephesians 3, 7, and 8 talks about grace as far as a gift of ministry. In Ephesians 4, verse 7, it says, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. We're all given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. What a great thing. Worse, we have that grace. And, you know, we just add our heart to what we want in this lifetime. You know, of late, I have been praying and asking God to give us young people. We need young people for God's word. So I'm out and I'm going, okay, I need to work on this teaching, work, 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 you know, and I'm going to go to this diner because I go to diners sometimes to drink a cup of coffee. And, and so I'm about to go to this diner and then the thought comes, that's ah, a busy, noisy place. Yes, it is. So go left here. So I went left and then, oh, there's a diner I've never been to, I've never heard of it before. So I go in there and they close in 45 minutes and nobody is in there. This one little waitress and she started talking to, and I said, I got to do my computer. I'm doing grace. Da, 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 da. And then I hear this young girl talking about, uh, oh, you know, what are you going to do? And I said, are you in high school? Yeah, I'm in high school. I'm a sophomore. I'm a junior. And what do you want to do when you grow up? I want to either be an art designer or I want to go to Bibles college. <laughs> okay. Okay. She's a sophomore in high school. And she wants to go to Bible college. So I'm going, well, what is with this? Girl? So she comes over to me. <laughs> She comes over to me. I said, well, what, what were you homeschooled? I said, how did you keep, you know, your Christianity? And she goes, well, I had an encounter with God. I said, what do you mean by that? And she said, said oh, I had an encounter with God. And I said, really? Okay. Tell me about this. And she said, you know, my mom took me to church when I was really three days old or something. You know, I learned a few Bible verses and then I really wasn't in it at all. She said, my mother actually left my father and left me and my two brothers when I was nine years old. And I said, wow, that must have been tough. I said, well, then who raised you? And she goes, I raised my brothers. Oh. And then she said, and then when I was 12 and I just got in such a dark place and I just knew I wanted to end it. Oh. And I was crying out to God and said, if you're real, do something. 
And she had two brothers. And she's telling me this story in this restaurant, you know. And she said, and I had two brothers. And one of them was really didn't talk very much. And the other one was kind of like happy-go-lucky. And, and I had written out all these letters, how I, why I ended my life. And to all, I got, went through everything. And I was going upstairs to kiss my brothers for the last time <laughs> to say goodbye to them. And when she kissed the second brother who doesn't talk very much, he sat bolt right up and he said, don't ever leave us. Oh <laughs> and, and she had all these shackles break off her and fall down. And now she does podcasts about not being in despair as a young person. She goes, you don't know how many people, young people are in despair. And I thought, well, shit, come to God's word. I mean, <laughs> I mean so anyway, I just, they're out there and God will answer those little prayers. We want young people. They're out there. They're crying out. They need God's word. You know, you probably have a hundred stories too. <laughs> we have lots of crazy stories teachers Whew. anyway where was i okay so anyway thankfulness so no. let's talk about what else we want to have in our grace life our grace walk verse 29 <clears throat> uh ephesians 4 29 uh can you read that my dear yes let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. It ministers grace unto the hearers. You know, corrupt communication. I used to have this experiment when I had the styrofoam cup and I had acetone in it. Was... And, you know, sometimes when you're with believers, one of the greatest things is about it's new life talk. It's new life talk. The world is not part of our life. But then once in a while, all of us might bring in something that's like, it's like you've dropped a stink bomb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who, who let that one go? Let no corrupt communication. But that which is good, that it ministers grace. We can minister edifying words. Okay. It's like, that word uh, to that which is good, it's useful. I mean, gossip is not useful. Um, no more bitter biting barbs. How's that one for an alliteration? No caustic cutting criticisms. No, all of that is out the door. I mean, we've got enough hell on earth yeah. in the center of the shadow of the love of God. Let's keep our talk sweet and tender. So, the word says you can frustrate it, you can fail of it, you can fall from it, you can misrepresent it. In Galatians 1, Jude 4, I'm not going to all those places, but, and I was talking to Bruce about this. When I say fail of the grace of God, it doesn't mean losing salvation. Right. It means you lose the blessing, you just miss out on the blessing. I mean, shoot, who wants to be doing corrupt communication when I can be blessed? Who wants to be, you know, who wants to be in good works, good works, good works when I can be? Blessed with all spiritual blessings and walk in believing. Believing is the walk of the supernatural. Grace is the walk of the supernatural. They all weave together. Romans 5, verse 1. How am I doing for time? Romans. Oh, late. Well, is that right? Am I supposed to end at 10? Um, in one minute? Oh. I'll go fast. Okay. I'm not timing it. All right. <laughs> Romans 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, made righteous. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this. We have access into this grace. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Bruce. It says here, peace, then grace. Okay. In Ephesians 1 verse where it says grace and grace peace. And when I worked my research paper, I just thought that's got to be peace and grace because you need the grace after. Grace helps you. It's not just grace you're born again. Once you have peace with God, then you need grace to carry out life, right? We do. And here in Romans 5, it says, 
Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We have access into his presence. What a blessing. And if you look in the Old Testament about access or being in, in God's presence, the psalmist wrote about being in God's presence. In God's presence, mountains melt, idols move walls come tumbling down in god's presence there is power in god's presence idols are moved in god's presence there is fullness of and at his right hand pleasures of evermore okay that's the access we have into his presence in the temple they said your name is in this pleasant and in your presence you hear and you help glory and honor are in your presence Glory and honor are in the presence of God, and we have that presence. I'd like to go to Hebrews 4.16. Let us therefore, I'll, we can quote it. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find to help in time. You need that grace to help. It's renewed over and over. We need grace each time, each moment to, in this situation to help in time of need. And I'll close in June 24 because the presence of God is so great. Uh, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. 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 God bless you. Wow. Very good. I kind of like that. In the next episode, we'll hear a teaching on what difference does it make? The integrity of the word by Ken Libby. In the meantime, you can look over the show notes below. The latest announcements are at the beginning of the show notes, and you can see the upcoming events, and there are links to all the podcasts, all my website teachings, and how to link into the Zoom fellowships.